Hi everyone. Um, I live in Stockholm in Sweden. And in Stockholm there is a beautiful archipelago around 24,000 islands. And on one of those islands I have a small house. That is my sanctuary. That's where I have clean air, fresh water and the closeness to the nature. And that is where my two girls, seven and nine years old, are growing up and where the closeness to the nature is shaping their values and their future. I want to protect that sanctuary and your sanctuary, wherever that is in the world, for the future generation. And that is my driving spirit to fight climate change. At the same time, I am the CEO of a company called Scania and we are part of an ecosystem of transport and logistics. We deliver trucks and buses and services. And uh, this sector, this industry or this ecosystem represents roughly around 20% of the global CO2 emissions. And depending on how you calculate, you can say that Scania as a company with around 1.2 million vehicles running around in 120 countries, we actually represent close to 1% of the global CO2 emissions every year. Doesn't that like, feel like shit? especially with my sort of personal conviction. And on top of this, the need for transport is continuing to grow. Transport is the backbone of our society. It develops our economical and social sort of structure of our society. And the need for transport will continue. It will continue to grow with urbanization and with the population growing. And we are now coming to a tipping point where it is very difficult to cope with this increased need of transport and the fossil CO2 footprint that we leave behind us. So how should we address this? Yeah, we um, need to go back in time and uh, look a little bit at history, what that has taught us. In the beginning, we used muscle power uh, to be able to move people or goods. As time developed, we came up with some inventions. It took a while, but then we had the wheel, which improved, of course, the efficiency of the transport system quite dramatically. Then we had to wait quite a long time until the beginning of the 1800, where the steam engine was developed, running on fossil coal, but giving us the opportunity to start building, among other things, railways. At the end of the 1800, the combustion engine came into place. Again, something running on fossil fuels, running on oil, diesel or petrol. But this gave us a wider range of different kinds of vehicles that we could use to do transport. It gave us cars and trucks and better, more in, improved sort of railway solution. All these technologies together, they gave us a stepwise increase in the transport capacity and in the transport system. You can say that um, they were all development steps that gave us uh, the foundation for economical growth. And that you can see behind me here on the curve how the correlation is between the different transport system and the GDP growth. Unfortunately, there is another curve popping up as well, and that is rising even more dramatically, and that is the CO2 footprint. And that has to do, of course, that all of this transport that we are providing up until now has been running on fossil fuels and has created an enormous CO2 footprint, which, with my conviction, doesn't feel very good. We are actually part of the problem, but we would like to be part of the solution. So what do we need to do to break this curve? Yeah, there is a couple of technologies up here that you can see. We talk about automation, we talked about connectivity, we talked about um, electrification. And they will eventually, in the future, bend the curve. However, you know, we agreed in Paris in 2015 that the fossil free transport system should be in place no later than 2050, which means that we need to half the development or the CO2 footprint, half it every 10 years. And that we will be able to do only if we start acting here and now. 
And that's why we need to start using biofuels in the short term. Biofuels like biogas, a KPI for all of you to remember. If you use the wastewater from our toilets, you need 600 toilets is enough to fuel one big bus for a city for one full year. There is also other types of fuels from residuals from the production in the agriculture sector or a forestry sector. Eventually, electrification will also come in here and help us to bend the curve. Electrification when it comes to battery vehicles, also on heavy trucks and buses. However, there we have to make sure that we use electricity that is renewable and that is not leaving a CO2 footprint. And we need also to take care that we have the infrastructure in place. And then I'm not just talking about charging station and the power lines, also that we have the capacity to produce the electrification. But eventually, electrification will, on the road to 2050, be the main road, which will mean the death of the combustion engine within a few years. What I've talked about so far is, of course, technology linked to the vehicle that can break the curve and bend the curve. But that will not be enough. We need to also look broader into our ecosystem of transport and logistics and look at the logistical flow as such. At Scania, back in 2011, we decided to connect all our trucks and buses that we produced. So today, our global rolling fleet, around 70% of all the vehicles are connected, sending information every minute, where they are, how they're performing, how much they're loaded, who's driving them, how the driver is performing. In Europe, that number is 92%. From that, we can see in Europe, which has the world's most sophisticated logistical system, we spend around 6.5% of our GDP on logistics. Still, the average truck is only utilized and loaded to 60%. 40% is free capacity and air. Why is it like that? Yeah, let me give you an example. My shoes that I wear today, I ordered uh, online uh, as a retail. Um, it took me three days to get them. I took the opportunity to follow the tracking on the website or the retailer, and I could see there um, how they were moving. Uh, a quite interesting journey. It all started off uh, in Frankfurt, where they um, came in. And uh, from there, they went south, surprisingly, to Paris, and then up to Amsterdam, and via southern Sweden up to Stockholm. The average speed for my shoes, they were traveling at around 15 kilometers per hour. But I know that trucks usually do around 80 kilometers per hour, which means that they were spending a lot of time in different reloading hubs along the route. And of course, taking a detour down to Paris, if you go north, is creating a lot of unnecessary CO2 emissions. So um, why didn't we go direct? Why didn't sort of the flow go straight up? And the reason for that is that uh, we build big trucks, and big trucks need to be filled up to make sense for our customers to be financially viable, for them to make money. Um, and why is that? Yeah, because the biggest cost that our customer have is the driver. 50% of the cost of a transport company is the driver. And that is why we have big vehicles, and that's why we have this derouting. If you look at the different connection points for my shoes, how they were traveling, there are basically four hours in between them. Because that is the driving time, then the driver must legally stop and rest for 45 minutes, then they can drive another shift of four hours, then they have to stop for the day. So um, you can say that the current logistical system that we have in the world is designed around the driver. So what would happen if we would replace the driver with technology? Automation and autonomous heavy vehicles. Most probably we'll get a more efficient transport system, maybe even faster. We will probably get the possibility to run 24-7 because we don't have the limitation of the driving time of the driver. Um, probably much more efficient system. But of course, for us as a supplier, probably we don't need big trucks anymore because you can optimize the system when it's all connected in a much better way. With autonomous vehicles running on renewable fuels or running on pure electric, which is sustainable, then probably smaller vehicles will come through. 
And, and what should we sell in the future? Should we sell a connected vehicle and say good luck to people? Now, we probably need to sell it together with some sort of control tower like we have on an airport, which is controlling a whole system. And then we have to ask ourselves, who is our customer then tomorrow? Because our current customer, which is the great asset for us, their core business is to manage and hire drivers and move goods from A to B. That is not needed in the future. So who will be our customers? Is it our customer's customer? What we can be sure of, though, is that um, automation will create a much more efficient transport system and a much more sustainable transport system. You can say that my shoes will arrive with a smaller CO2 footprint. At Scania, we have decided that we will drive the shift towards a more sustainable transport system. That is our purpose. And we believe we can do it because we have it in our heritage, we have it in our blood, we have it in our culture and our values in the company, with our 50,000 people around the world. We will be able to do it with technology. That way we will bend the curve. However, we cannot do it alone. We need partnerships. We need partnership with policymakers, politicians, with energy providers, with infrastructure builders, with academia, with the society. That is the only way we can make this shift happen. And we need to act here and now. Coming back to my sanctuary, the house in the Stockholm archipelago. You know, I have this um, picture in my head. It's 20 years from now. I'm sitting there on my favorite bench looking out at the beautiful water. And then my two girls have grown up and they're coming up to me. And then two scenarios are happening. The first one is that um, they tell me, Dad, you worked at Scania. Uh, you were quite one of the big polluters, damaging our whole planet. Didn't you see that coming? Were you blind or were you stupid? Or the other scenario is that they come up and say, hey, I heard that uh, you were part of the transformation. You bended the curve, you gathered together a powerful sort of ecosystem, transformed the whole transport system into a fossil free one. Which of these two scenarios would you choose? I have chosen. Scania, we have chosen. And I urge you all to join us on this trip in driving the shift. Thank you.